Hi, this is Jeff Coronado from JCSC, and this is Bridging the Gap. Um, it's an ongoing sequence that we use here uh, at JCSC to assist uh, young structural engineers uh, who have little or no experience coming out of school to, to bridge that gap between what they did learn at school and, and basically what they're expected to know um, in, their, in their young careers um, for practice. So with that, let's jump into this design tutorial. Um, the question that comes up is, what is the effective area of, uh, of the rebar plate weld in this connection? Okay, and in looking at it, uh, valid question here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Sure, okay. All right, so uh, let me zoom in a little bit more. My side isn't uh, quite what it used to be. So, okay, so um, let me zoom in even a little bit more here. All right, so um, I can see that we've got a steel strap, right? You can see the steel strap there. And for right now, the dimensions are just called out as T and L. So we've got a certain thickness and a certain length, and that's for the, uh, for the engineer to, to, de to determine. Uh, what the what the size is of that plate, but we've got a steel plate and over here We've got a dowel and it looks like it's a rebar dowel uh, It's only specified as a number D bar. So that that again is for the engineer for you to determine um, What's the bar size each one of those are different? Um, quick calculations that you'll need to do uh, And then here is the weld symbol. Here's the weld that we've got connecting then this bar right here, and I'll stop there, this bar with uh, this dowel right here. So we're trying to weld a steel dowel, uh, I'm sorry, we're trying to weld a dowel to a steel plate here. Um, and the idea there would be, sure looks like we're gonna be trying to transfer some kind of tensile load between those two elements uh, and connecting with the weld. Okay, let me draw over this in the hopes of making this perhaps a little bit uh, clearer, a little bit more transparent. So we've got, um, let's see if I can draw here. So here's our steel strap. All right, so I've drawn that in red. In, use blue here. So in blue, we've got a rebar. A rebar dowel, okay. Um, and we need to weld these. So hmm, what do I do now? How about black? So right in here, we need to come up with a weld that will transfer the load. Again, uh, what do we do here? How about green? Uh, again, uh, we've got a tensile load here, right? So we've got some, and I'll just call this a big capital T. Um, we've got a tensile load that's pulling apart the steel strap from, from the rebar. And we need to transfer that load through, through the weld uh, shown in black. And that's what we need to determine what the uh, effective area of that weld is. Okay, so let me cut uh, a section through here. Um, cut, if we were to cut a section right through here, and let me try to use the same colors that I had before. So we've got, uh, what we would see is this, we would have our steel strap in red. We've got a, uh, a bar in blue, right? We've got a rebar in blue. And then we've got weld. Um, So I'm gonna, yeah, in black, uh, I'm showing you a weld now. For right now, we're gonna skip over what type of weld we've got. All we know is that somehow we are providing some kind of weld here, some kind of weld, um, probably on both sides, right? Some kind of weld to connect that rebar to, to the steel plate. 
Now we're trying to stay focused on, on the weld, uh, right? We're trying to stay focused on the weld. After all, there's three things here that can have a failure mode. So our failure, we can have a failure here either in this steel plate, right? If that plate is, is too thin or not wide enough, if there's not enough cross-sectional area, that steel plate can fail. So that's, that's a check that we would need to do, or at least consider, at least consider it. Um, the dowel itself could be the failure mode. If that dowel is too small, then the tensile load uh, would exceed the capacity of that dowel and that would fail. Or our failure can occur through the weld, right? We can have a failure that kind of cuts through the weld and, and the bar would remain intact and the dowel would remain intact, but the failure plane would occur in the weld. So right now what we're focusing on is the failure mode that cuts through the weld cross-sectional area. So that's what we want to determine here. So the next thing that we want to focus on here is, uh, let me go to red. The next thing we want to focus on here is this symbol. That symbol is what tells us what our weld type is. Now in this weld symbol, um, in this weld symbol, there are one, two, there are three pieces of data, uh, three pieces of information that we need to collect there. So first, let's start off with uh, our line here. Um, this is standard welding uh, sim uh, what's, uh, symbols. Um, let's start off with the little vertical line. Okay, so right now we're looking at this guy. So that vertical line is a um, is representative uh, typically of what we would refer to as a bevel weld. Write that out. So that's a bevel weld. All right. So so this go to black here. Okay. So this vertical line. This vertical line, that part of it is what we typically refer to as a bevel. All right, now let's deal with um, let's deal with now we have this other line or curve. Remember, um, let's see if I can erase this, and that would have been. Uh, this one right here, right? We've got this curve, which is being represented right here. That curve is, um, that is a flare. That is what we refer to as a flare. Let me capitalize that for you. All right, so uh, what we have now is a flare bevel weld. So that's what that symbol is trying to tell us. We've got a flare bevel weld. Um, the third component of the information that we've got in our weld symbol is that, um, remember it was also shown, the same symbol was shown on the other side of the horizontal line. What that tells us is that then it occurs on both sides. Uh, both sides of what? Well, that's, that's, uh, that's I guess, to be determined. Um, but it is a weld that occurs on both sides of something. Leave it at that. Okay, it's a weld that occurs on both sides of something. So when you see the same weld symbol or whatever the weld symbol is that occurs below the line, below that horizontal line, as well as above the horizontal line, that's telling you that we want that weld to occur on both sides of the materials that are being welded. All right, so armed with the knowledge that we have a flare bevel uh, weld, uh, let's go down here. 
we are going to march down to um, AISC 360, and that's the uh, specification structural. Check on that. Structural field buildings. All right, so that's uh, we're going to go to AISC 360. There you will find chapter J, which is the chapter on connections. And there you will see table, right here, J 2.2, which is the effective weld sizes of flare, Groove, or I'm sorry, flare bevel groove welds. Flare bevel groove welds. And there we are. So, table J2.2 uh, gives us the effective weld size uh, of a flare bevel, um, of a flare bevel weld, which is what we established we had based on our symbol. So, we're done, right? Well, not so quick. Problem is that. According to the table, um, it, it uh, throws a little, uh, another little hitch at us, and that is we have to first, it, the, the thickness of the weld is going to depend on the type of weld process that we have. So let's see here. The table gives us some options. We could go with GMA, GMAW, F. C A W dash G S M A W F C A W S and S A W. So the table gives us a number of welding processes, and it depends on which process we are using that'll that will determine the effective thickness uh, for the weld. Now to determine which welding you actually have, you, you'll need to go into your office's uh, uh, general notes and see what's the standard uh, that your office uses. Uh, let me see. Um, uh, I, I think what you're gonna find is that basically the standard of the industry is uh, the S variation here. And this um, basically stands for flux. Cord arc welding. So that's flux cord arc welding, FCAW, FCAW. Uh, the S variation means that it's self shielded. So, more than likely, what you're going to encounter in your office generals is that your, the standard for your office is FCAWS. It's a pretty standard uh, weld uh, type. Um, again, employed probably by, by most offices, but that's something that you need to check in, in uh, your office's general notes. For the FCAWS uh, weld, um, the effective thickness, so let's call it what, T effective, is given as uh, 5 sixteenths of R. And again, that's in table J2.2. Uh, okay, so getting back to our situation uh, where we have a, we determined we had a plate and we have uh, a bar. And we had welds on both sides of the bar. A weld here and a weld here. Um, so we've got a certain radius for that bar. Uh, 
that were welding. So, so basically this dimension here, the thickness of the weld, what we're calling T effective, is this distance, I've already kind of crossed it, but right here, that distance is what we're calling T effective. And that T effective is given by 5 sixteenths times the radius of the bar that we're welding. So let me go here to black. So basically that thickness, now in our case, what did we have? We, have, we had the plate and then we had the rebar underneath, remember? And yes, we had uh, a tensile load. Which we'll call T. Um, use green here to show the weld. And so we know that we have a weld connecting the plate and the bar. And so that effective area So that effective area, so let's call it A effective, is going to be T effective, what we've just determined as T effective, times the length of the weld. And the length of the weld, I believe we've covered uh, in another tutorial, uh, because it's not as obvious as you might think. So that's covered in another tutorial, but basically that effective length times that effective thickness that we've just determined is what gives us the cross-sectional area uh, for the weld. That multiplied by the capacity of the weld um, then gives us the capacity, uh, I'm sorry, the unit capacity of the weld. That cross-sectional area multiplied by the unit capacity of the weld gives us the total capacity of the weld for this connection. And so let me clear the screen because uh, I believe with that, we've now answered the original question, which is what is the effective area of the weld that connects the rebar and the plate? Okay, um, if there's any questions on anything I've said, here is my email address, by all means, feel free. Uh, here's my email address, feel free to send me an email uh, with anything that you would like me to clarify and we'll try to get to that, okay? Real good.